yeah. Is it Saturday already? Oh my goodness, we are finally back. And we got a ton of stuff to talk about from the Acolyte to this week's Bad Batch episode to even an unboxing of Chopper. We got a lot to go over today and a lot to talk about because this Acolyte trailer, hoo, 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 do we have a lot to talk about today, ladies and gentle beings. How's everybody doing on this fine Saturday afternoon? It's so good to be back. What's up, guys? It's Mike, a guy who loves Star Wars. We got a lot to get into today. This Acolyte trailer dropped on Tuesday. We have yet to be able to talk about it together, really, to the extent that I want to, unless you're in the Discord or whatever. So we got to talk about it today. We're going to break it down frame by frame, piece by piece, character by character. We're doing it all today. And of course, we got a Bad Batch episode to talk about as well. We got some other stuff to talk about as well. We got a lot of Star Wars news to talk about as well. And not only that, but today we got a very special thing to do today. Ugh. As I went over this course of this week, because yes, I've been gone all week, uh, to Galaxy's Edge. And today we are unboxing Chopper. Yeah, we'll be doing that later on in the stream. Chopper right here. He's in a box. He wants to be out of the box. We're going to do that for him later. We got Acolyte to talk about. We got Bad Batch to talk about. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Cause so, it's kind of little, little, little. so smash a freaking like on the stream and let's dive into all of it. How's everybody doing on this fine Saturday afternoon? Let me open up the chat so I can see what you guys are talking about. Let's see what you guys talk about. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Maggie, what's up? Uh, Ian, what's up? Fearless, how we doing? Okay. Rasheen Rose, what's up, Rasheen? All right. So we got to talk about the Acolyte trailer. Okay. There is a very big divide in the Star Wars fandom right now over this Acolyte trailer, over the Acolyte show in general. People are very excited about it. People are very angry about it. People are all over the place when it comes to this Acolyte show. So my question to you, my question to you is what did you think about that trailer? What did you think about the Acolyte trailer? Did it get you excited? Are you excited for the Acolyte? What do we think? What do we think? We're going to watch this trailer once all the way through without pausing, and then we're going to break it down together. If I saw something, if you saw something, tell me in the chat. So we're going to watch it right now, just to start off the stream on the right note. Let's watch this trailer. It's extremely hyped up, I think. I think it's very, very cool. So let's watch it together here. Wait one second. Let's watch it together. Just one, one time through, and then we can talk about it and break it down and all that fun stuff. So let's watch it through one time. Let's go full screen here. Boom, boom. Got it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's do it. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sensed darkness. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? What is that? I mean, come on. So the big story of the week is that this video has more dislikes than it does likes on YouTube. So actually, if you look here, YouTube has gotten rid of the dislike number. It always has, the, and of course I liked it because that is a fucking amazing trailer. I don't know how so many people have disliked it, but we're going to talk about it. They've gotten rid of the number for dislikes. 
we've gotten rid of that number. So how does everybody know that there's a bunch of dislikes? Well, actually, in the back end, somebody, I had to pull, oh, here we go. Somebody found it. And obviously these numbers are a few days old, so it's a little bit different, but it has more dislikes by almost 30,000 than it does likes. Now there's a few reasons as to why this happened. A lot of people are very against Leslie Headland, who's the showrunner for the show. And a lot of people honestly just don't like the show. They don't like the idea of the show. And that's probably why it has so many dislikes. But the more logical reason as to why it has more dislikes is the political side of it, is the Leslie Headland side of it. And we won't really touch too much on that. I want to talk about the trailer itself because we just watched it all the way through. And oh my goodness, was this trailer absolutely incredible. I mean, did you guys like this trailer? Tell me in the chat, obviously. But yes, we got two episodes premiering on June 4th. And if you guys did the math, June 4th is actually a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. We are back to the Ahsoka release schedule of this show will come out on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, and wherever you are around the world, it's that time. So 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going back to the Ahsoka release schedule that happened during the Ahsoka show. So much better than what's going on right now with the Bad Batch. So much better. But this show has an extreme divide in the fandom already, and we are three months away. The first trailer just dropped, and it's extremely divided already. So we got to talk about that. We got to break this trailer down, and we got to see what we think's going on in this Acolyte show, okay? So first in the chat, just tell me, did you like that trailer? Did that get you excited? There's a lot of new faces, of course. We're going to break it all down. We got character descriptions for everybody, for every single character pretty much in that trailer. We got a character description for them. So let me read what you guys are talking about in the chat. Maggie first in today says, congrats on 33.7K subscribers. Thank you, Maggie. Yes. So let's start there, I guess. Why not? Uh, let's let's play the song. Let's play the song. Play the song. Okay, so obviously, thank you guys so much for 30,000 subscribers. Absolutely insane. I've been on vacation all week. Haven't been able to do a breakdown video for this Acolyte tra uh, trailer. Haven't been able to do a breakdown video for The Bad Batch. Haven't, able been, ugh, haven't been able to do my live streams this week. And you guys were the best in the Discord. Like, Mike, go enjoy your vacation, whatever. But we hit some crazy uh, subscriber goals over the th last week, and that is 25,000 and, of course, 30,000. We're currently at 33,000, I believe, and we are still pushing. So that's awesome. I cannot thank you guys enough. It's incredible. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Maggie. I appreciate that. So Ian says, how's Galaxy's Edge? It was absolutely awesome. I have a million pictures that I've sent to the Discord, and I'll send more if you guys want. But yeah, we, and we got Chopper to unbox later in the stream. Yeah. I always wanted to see Mike's Chopper. Oh, what? <laughs> Yeah. Ian says, I don't get why people are so angry. I thought it was a great teaser trailer. I absolutely think this is one of the best teaser trailers we've gotten for any Star Wars show. It's definitely better than almost every Mando trailer. Ahsoka might have it beat, but that is even close. Uh, it's better than Andor. It's better than Kenobi. It's better than... Uh, maybe not Kenobi, because it's just Kenobi had the hype behind it, you know? It's better than Book of Boba Fett. This trailer is absolutely insane. The only reason that people aren't liking it is because of the Leslie Headland stuff, and of course, because it's a lot of characters that we don't know, and a time period that we don't know at all. It's a hundred years before The Phantom Menace, and it's in a time period where we've never been to yet, so a lot of fans are very hesitant about that with Disney Star Wars. I absolutely love the trailer. I think it's so Star Wars, honestly, like just Star Wars. People complained 
people who loved Andor loved it because it wasn't the Force, it wasn't all this stuff. It's almost the exact opposite of that. Andor was kind of like, didn't feel like Star Wars, but it was in Star Wars. It didn't have any aliens in it, it didn't have any Force in it, it didn't have any lightsabers in it. And this shows the exact opposite. Lightsabers galore, the Force all over the place, and aliens up the wazoo. It's Star Wars. It's supposed to have aliens. It's like a new hope. You walk into the cantina, and there's a million different species of aliens. This trailer had a bajillion it's a number, look it up, <laughs> aliens, in the trailer. We're going to break it down frame by frame, but we'll, we'll get into it. Fearless says, I loved it. I'm so hyped for this show now. Me too. This actually got me a lot more excited for the show. Maggie says, why, do, why are people so angry? People confuse me. People confuse me too all the time. Star Wars is probably the greatest thing to ever exist, you know? And people shit on it all the time. I don't understand. I really don't. Navarro, what's up? How we doing? Alex says, close your eyes, alien kid. I can't master. Yeah, so this is the kind of the meme that's been going around uh, all week here. At the beginning of the trailer, he says, close your eyes. Where is it at? At the beginning of the trailer, he says, close your eyes. And then it cuts to this. Um, this alien kid here. And everybody else has their eyes closed except for him because he can't close his eyes. It's pretty funny. It is pretty funny, Alex. Uh, that is hilarious. But he can't. He really can't. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Whatever. Funny, funny, funny. Yeah. Alex says, I'm positive, but it looks like... Wait, what? I'm positive, but it looks like shit. The trailer looks like shit? What? What? Ian says, only a Sith Lord could force push that many Jedi. Okay, so yeah, there's... Like, about eight Jedi, I think I counted at the end of that trailer. And that new Sith Lord, I'm making a full-on video, it'll come out tomorrow. Um, that new Sith Lord is pushing all of them away. And probably going to kill all of them. And killing Jedi all over the place. So, this new Sith Lord is extremely powerful, and we don't know who it is. We'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Let me end this poll, actually. It was just a, like, the stream poll, whatever. Let me start up a new poll. Let me start up a new poll. And that is, are you, whoops, are you excited for the Acolyte? Just a simple yes or no. Are you excited? After watching that trailer, are you excited? Yes or no? You tell me. Um, Maggie says, that trailer is awesome. Yeah, I agree. Fearless says, I don't give a hoot, okay, about <laughs> any dislikes. Uh, we are getting a new Star Wars show outside the Skywalker saga. Yeah, and it's kind of like you only you only know how good it's going to be once you see it. So it's kind of hard to judge how good this show will really be until we see it with our own two eyes. And seeing the trailer with our own two eyes was a good indication of how good this show can be. Alex says, it doesn't feel like Star Wars. I could not disagree more. I think this feels more like Star Wars than anything we've gotten in a long time. Uh, I mean, anything... Obviously, Ahsoka felt like Star Wars. It's along the same lines for me as Ahsoka. It feels that same way, like Star Wars, where we had Andor, we had even like Boba Fett. It, it felt like Star Wars, but it, it didn't really, you know, like it didn't have the lightsaber. Like this is the first thing that feels like the prequels in a long, long time. That's where I'm at with it. It feels like Star Wars, you know? Um, Alex says, I'm not trying to be rude, but it didn't feel like Star Wars. Like I'm used to, uh, like I'm used to it. Didn't feel like George Lucas Star Wars. I, I honestly could not disagree with you more. Honestly, I'm being genuine when I say that this is the most Star Wars felt I've had since Disney's bought Star Wars. This is the most likely George Lucas show that we've gotten since Star uh, Disney took over Star Wars. Just based off of the tra trailer, purely this feels like the prequel trilogy with Coruscant and the Jedi Council and all this other stuff. It feels the most like something that George Lucas would create, but that's just me, Alex. That's just me. Just me. Ian says, you got 10,000 extra subs when you weren't even streaming, LOL. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't stream anymore. Is that what, what, is that what should happen? <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, yeah, but I agree. It is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Fearless says, I can't get the complaints. I'm just happy and will watch the Acolyte and then judge it if I like it or not. 
yeah, I, I mean, watching this trailer, it got me extremely hyped up for it. Maybe the show will still suck. I don't know. But the trailer got me really, really excited. That's all I know. That's all I know. Yeah. Navarro, what's up? What's up? The math ain't mathin' once again. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. Alex says, it better not retcon Kiati Mundi in The Phantom Menace. Okay, Alex, let's talk about that for a second. So, the big problem is, Kiati Mundi says, uh, Kiati Mundi and Mace Windu say that the Sith haven't been around for a thousand years in The Phantom Menace. A thousand years. This show takes place 50 to 100 years before The Phantom Menace. Not a thousand. So there's a Sith in the trailer, we saw the red lightsaber, we saw him fighting eight Jedi. How is that not retconning what Kiati Mundi said? There's two options here. There is two major options. One, this Sith Lord kills every Jedi in his path, and no Jedi who remains ever sees him and doesn't know that there's a Sith Lord. And that could work, but honestly, I think that's the worst of the two options because the second option is that the Jedi keep it a secret. The Jedi, as we see them in the prequel trilogy, are extremely corrupt. Extremely corrupt. To the point that Qui-Gon Jinn doesn't even want to be on the council. He's one of the best Jedi. He's one of the really Jedi. Like, he is what a Jedi is supposed to be, Qui-Gon Jinn in The Phantom Menace. And he won't even join the Council because he thinks the Jedi are so corrupt. Ahsoka Tano leaves the Jedi Order in The Clone Wars because the Jedi Order is so corrupt. The Jedi are not the Jedi that they're supposed to be. And I actually think that the Acolyte show is going to be the start of that. It's going to see the downfall of the Jedi Order 100 years before it really falls. And I could see this happening where Yoda and a few other Jedi probably, know about this Sith Lord and keep it a secret. This is not the first time that, that the Jedi have done this. Actually, in the High Republic books right now, there's something of a creature named the Nameless. And the Jedi are keeping that creature a secret from other Jedi. The Jedi who come, into count, uh, come encounter with this Nameless creature don't tell anybody else. And I think this is going to be a very similar case here, where the Jedi will come into contact with a Sith a hundred years before the Phantom Menace, and they'll keep it a secret. And in that scene, where Kiati mundi says that the Sith haven't been around for a thousand years, Yoda will know that they fought a Sith a hundred years ago, and he's keeping it a secret. And I think this is even more in line with what's going on with the Jedi Council in the prequel trilogy. How corrupt they really are, how much secrets they really are keeping, and why Qui-Gon wouldn't join the Council. Why Ahsoka Tano leaves the Council, and how it all leads to Anakin's fall to the dark side. The Chosen One was in the palms of their hands, and they lost him to the Sith. I think the Acolyte has a chance here to really do something special to show the downfall of the Jedi Order. The Jedi in the prequel trilogy are not the Jedi that we, we want them to be. They're just not. Even Yoda himself is extremely corrupt by the time of the prequel trilogy. So although I do think there are two options here where the Sith that they come, into count, come encounter with kills all of them, I think that that option is stupid. I think the better option is having the Jedi who see this Sith keep it a secret. Show the corruption in the Jedi Order. Show it growing until the prequel trilogy. Show the real reason that the Jedi had the Chosen One right in front of them and lost him to a Sith Lord named Palpatine. Show the real reason that Qui-Gon wouldn't join the Jedi Council. Because the Jedi are absolutely not what they're supposed to be during the prequel trilogy. They're, they're supposed to be the keepers of the peace. And by the prequel trilogy, they are generals in a war. So I think the Acolyte really, really, really has a chance to do something really special here and show the downfall of the Jedi Order. Show the deception and the secretis secretism secretis in the secrets that the Jedi are keeping during the time of the prequel trilogy. Yoda especially, because Yoda's going to be there. He's going to be. He's going to be in this show. And he's going to know that there was a Sith Lord that they came into contact with. A red lightsaber wielding badass. And he's going to keep it a secret for the next hundred years. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to show 
the corruption, the downfall of the Jedi Order. The reason that Anakin Skywalker was right in front of them and they lost him. I think it's I think this show could be, and I'm saying could be because we haven't seen it yet. It could be horrible for all I know. But I think it could be the p- missing piece, although I don't think there is really a missing piece, the missing piece to the prequel trilogy, to how the Jedi ended up the way that they are. They're not keepers of the peace. They're a corrupt organization of politicians by the time of the prequel trilogy. They're generals in a war. That's not the Jedi. That's not the keepers of the peace. And I think the Acolyte could show us that from going the keepers of the peace. In the High Republic books, they are the keepers of the peace. Going from that to what we see in the prequel trilogy. The Acolyte, because we know it's already confirmed for a second season, could do this. But what do you think? Do you think that's possible? Do you think this Sith Lord that shows up in this show could actually be just kept a secret for the next hundred years until the prequel trilogy, showing the lies and deceit of the Jedi? Not the lies and deceit of the Sith, the lies and deceit of the Jedi as they become more corrupt and completely miss Palpatine under their nose and all die in Order 66. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that's what we're going towards here? We're not even talking about who this Sith Lord is. That's not what I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about who this Sith is at the end of the trailer. That really doesn't matter. Okay, it matters. We'll talk about it. But what I'm talking about right now is whether or not the Jedi who come into contact with this Sith, are going to survive or not? And if they do survive, are they going to keep this a secret? Why does Gyadi Mundi say that the Sith have not been around for a thousand years when we clearly see, in this Acolyte trailer, a Sith Lord only a hundred years before the prequel trilogy? (laughs) Alright, let me catch up on chat, and then we're going to break down this trailer frame by frame because we got a lot to get into here. Okay. Um, here we go, here we go, where was I, where was I, where was I? Fearless says, I agree with you, Mike, it looks so much like Star Wars, I agree. Maggie says, Disney has gotten better at recreating the feel of Star Wars that Lucas did. (laughs) Yes and no. I think they've learned from their mistakes. That's a big thing. The sequel trilogy was a big mistake, and they've learned from it. Yeah. Alex says, I won't judge until I watch it, but I am, uh, but, but, opt, wait until I watch, but I am optimistic. If they push a certain agenda, just telling a story, uh, and not still, uh, wait, if they don't push a certain agenda and just tell a story, then I'm good with that. Yeah, the agenda pushing was a big problem in the sequel trilogy, and hopefully they go away from that and learn what they did, you know? <laughs> Maggie says, I thought Qui-Gon Jinn turned down the council because he was training Obi-Wan at the time. No. Qui-Gon doesn't want to be on the council because he sees the corruption of the Jedi in the prequel trilogy. The Jedi are not the keepers of the peace anymore. They're not what they were created to be. Qui-Gon is. Qui-Gon is the perfect example of what a Jedi is supposed to be. And he's not even on the council. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, what's up, Anthony? says, hi, Mike. I'm finishing up laundry, so I'll be in and out. Don't worry about it. But the Acolyte, High Republic fans... Should be so excited, but Headland's female centric uh, is a no no. Yeah, so the, the, the problem with Leslie Headland is a big problem for a lot of Star Wars fans. But we're going to talk about an interview that she had talking about the show and we'll read it, but yeah. Yeah. Navarro says, Is the Sith and the Acolyte, or is the Sith and the Acolyte Darth Tenebris? It could be, but. I'm, I'm making a full-on video about this. I don't think it is. Now, that doesn't mean that Darth Tenebris is not going to be in this show, or maybe even Darth Plagueis isn't going to be in this show, but I don't think that that Sith at the end of the trailer is Darth Tenebris. Anthony says, I really hope Master Yoda doesn't keep this a secret too. Interesting. Yes, he's already put a lid on the existence of the Nameless 350 years earlier, but this? No. Well, Anthony, I think that that story in the High Republic of the Nameless being kept a secret by the Jedi was just to lead to this, lead to this Sith Lord being kept a secret. 
The Jedi think that he's either dead or they know he's still out there, but they keep it a secret. Yeah. Uh, Anakin Skywalker, what's up, says, Somebody, uh, somehow Darth Plagueis has returned. It could be Plagueis. We'll talk about who the Sith Lord is in just a second here. Alex says, who knows? It might be good. I think it could be good, for sure. Anthony says, my assumption is that Yoda and Yaddle won't be aware of what ultimately happens in this particular story. Rumor is that Hedlund kept, uh, was kept from sh shading Yoda in her work, so Yoda will be, will be on sabbatical. I don't need to see more the Jedi are corrupt slash misguided critiques from the new age artists. Plus, this Jedi, this, plus this may be a case of power versus the Jedi slash the Force, slash without, uh, without the Sith being center stage, hence witches. Yes, yeah, so there are witches in the trailer, and we'll get to that. But I completely disagree with you. The, uh, you don't need to see more of the Jedi are corrupt. Nobody really notices how the Jedi are corrupt in the prequel trilogy other than, of course, probably us here today. But the Jedi being corrupt in the trailer is what leads to their down... I mean, in the prequel trilogy, is what leads to their downfall. And a lot of normie fans or a lot of people who just enjoy Star Wars in general don't understand that. They think that the Jedi are at their peak in the prequel trilogy. That's not the case. It's not the case at all. They're extremely corrupt, and that needs to be shown. That really needs to be shown. And... Palpatine especially come growing under their nose for the extent of the prequel trilogy and them not even noticing literally when Count Dooku tells Obi-Wan straight to his face that there's a Sith Lord in charge of the Senate he's like nah I'm good there needs to be more explanation as to why the Jedi are so naive why the Jedi are so stupid and, and miss all of that and this could be a big piece to that Ian says uh, certainly Kiati, uh, didn't know what was going on, so he was wrong. Oh, he doesn't know what we know. Yeah, no, he's not wrong. Kiati Moody's not alive at this point. He's not going to be in the Acolyte show. So, to him, whatever the Jedi are telling him is what he knows. So now he's hearing that the Sith haven't been around for a thousand years. That's what he thinks. That might not be the case. No, we know it's not the case. Anthony says... It's been revealed that the dark cloth, the dark clothed people that we see in the trailer represent the witch, witch's coven. Uh, what are they practicing? That'll be the difference maker. Yes, there are witches in the trailer, but there's def, there's no way that the tr that the Sith Lord at the end of this trailer is a witch. That's just not what's going on. The witches of Dothamir, of course, have been involved in a lot of different projects, from Ahsoka to uh, the Clone Wars to Rebels to everything. So I think those will be important, the witches at the end of this trailer, but they're definitely not the Sith Lord at the end of the trailer. I appreciate the hearts, guys. I do. Fearless says, they must keep it a secret because of those thousand years, Sith, thousand years of no Sith line in the prequels. But they do that, but why they do that is an interesting part. Exactly. Why do they keep this a Sith? A, a Sith. Why do they keep this a secret? It's the most important thing. If Yoda or even other Jedi around him know that this Sith was around only 50 years or 100 years before the prequel trilogy, then why did they keep it a secret? Why? Why not just tell everybody the Sith are still around and we got to be worried about them? We should be on alert. The Sith are the bad guys. We should be worried about them. Why is that kept a secret? That's a huge, huge deal. Maggie says, maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe we uh, were unwilling to accept that we are unwilling to accept that Star Wars is not being directed by Lucas. I'm confused. What was a mistake? I don't know. Ian says, oh no, a woman? <laughs> There's plenty of guys in the trailer. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just a stupid argument. A woman in Star Wars? Oh no. Oh no. Uh, Maggie says, thanks for the destroying how I see the prequels, Mike. Oh, sorry, Maggie. But yeah, the Jedi in the prequels are like the worst. They are so corrupt, it's insane. I mean, you just watch season five of the Clone Wars, and you can see how stupid they are. They literally disown Ahsoka from the Jedi Order for something that she didn't do when they had almost like no evidence as to her doing it. 
the 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 prequel trilogy Jedi are just not the Jedi. They're what became of the Jedi after hundreds of years of stupidity, but they are not the Jedi, you know? Fila says, well, it's easy to not notice something that's right under your nose when you are so convinced that you were the one fighting for peace and justice. It's really the Jedi's ignorance, uh, and they just can't admit it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. They are so blind to what's right in front of them. That's the whole gist of the prequel trilogy. They're so blind that they allow the Chosen One to be persuaded by the dark side, who's literally controlling the entire war that they're fighting in on both sides. Palpatine's leading the Separatists and leading the Republic. They are so blind that they, that they don't even see that. But the Jedi were once keepers of the peace. They were once a very strong order. And that's the High Republic, the beginning of the High Republic. Slowly but surely, throughout the High Republic era, they become what we see in the prequel trilogy. Yes. Uh, Kuju Man says they are adding more Sith. It's not that they're adding more. Let me put it this way. So in the prequel trilogy, you see Palpatine have a bunch of apprentices. You see uh, Mace Wind. I'm sorry, Mace Windu. You see Darth Maul. You see uh, Count Dooku. You see Anakin Skywalker. You see Dooku have Asajj Ventress, have Savage Opress, have General Grievous, but he's not really Sith, whatever. So you see all these different apprentices for Palpatine, all these different apprentices for Count Dooku. You see all of this sort of, there's supposed to be only two Sith. Only two there ever are. The rule of two. And yet there's way more than two throughout the prequel trilogy. Way more. So I think there's a similar situation going on here in the Acolyte. Whether it's Tenebris is the master or Plagueis is the master, I think we're going to see multiple apprentices in maybe this main character. Uh, the Amanda Steinberg actress who's playing the main character. Maybe she is just an apprentice of Tenebris or Plagueis before Palpatine was an apprentice of Plagueis. Same way like Maul was an apprentice of Palpatine before Dooku was. There's not always just two. The rule of two is only to have a master and an apprentice, but there could be multiple apprentices to multiple masters. And that's what I think is going on with this Sith at the end of the trailer. But let's break down the trailer. Okay, let's break down the trailer. Let's do it, okay? Let's do it. So, let's start at the beginning here, and let's do it. So let's go scene by scene. So we start off with, um, what's his name? Li Zhang Cha, the guy from Squid Games. He is talking to a pr uh, younglings at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Okay? That's where we start. Because you put, put the closed captioning on. He, so his name is Sol, by the way. Master Sol. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. So, I, th I believe that this is a flashback. This whole sequence right here is a flashback to when the main character, Amanda Steinberg, I believe her character's name is May, uh, when May is a kid at the Jedi Temple. So this is her, I think, not that's not her, but... Uh, I think this is her back here, as she says that she sees fire later on in the trailer. But I think that's her as a youngling back there. In, in Master Soul, uh, Li Zhang Cha's character, he is her master. But she eventually will leave the Order. So I think this is a flashback, for sure. We must not trust them. And this is her older now. So she's at some planet. We see a bunch of different planets in this in this trailer, which is cool. This is really an expansive universe that we're going to be get going into with the Acolyte, uh, and it's very, very Star Wars. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. 
So I think the g g little girl who's saying, I see fire, this girl back here, I think that is the main character, and I think this is a flashback. Fire. So that is the girl from The Matrix, uh, Carrie. Carrie Ann Moss. Sh I forget what her character's name is. We have a description for all the characters. We'll read that after. But she is about to fight Meg. So this is a pretty, pretty cool fight sequence. Honestly, you see the hilt of the lightsaber on Carrie Ann Moss's character. Uh, and what's up, John? Is it Indara? Is that her name? Uh, you see the lightsaber hilt on her body, but she doesn't take it out. She doesn't take the lightsaber out to fight her, which is interesting. Someone is killing Jedi. So, someone is killing Jedi, and we are led to believe that it's uh, this May character. But York is the one talking. He's a, a Jedi that we'll see in a second, but it looks like she's trying to kill somebody right now. Someone is killing Jedi. We don't know who this person is, but they're in a white cloak, led to believe that this could be a Jedi. But we really don't know. Let me pull this over a little bit. Perfect. So if I could pause it. Okay, yeah. So that's clearly the same character we just saw. Amanda Steinberg's character. She is trying to kill this person who seems to be meditating or something. But this is the Yord character. Sense. This is Yord. Yord character. He's a Jedi, he clearly looks a little bit younger, but he, he's a guy who kind of plays by the rules. We see a bunch of Jedi. Some people think this could be Plo Koon at the bottom here. If you zoom in, it looks like his species could be Plo Koon, because Plo Koon technically lives to be 385 years old. So he would be alive at the time of this show. It would be crazy to see Plo Koon in this, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So they're looking out at some sort of forest here. We don't know what planet they're on. We don't really know much here, but there's three posts with something on top of them. I don't know what it is, but interesting. We got a Wookiee Jedi being played by the same guy who plays Chewie in the sequel trilogy and in Solo. Uh, I forget his name, but pretty cool. He's a Wookiee Jedi who's kind of isolated himself. It's pretty cool. What happened? I sensed the dark. You got uh, Master Soul uh, reading this guy's mind through the Force. What happened? I sensed the darkness. So like I said, I think this is Master and Apprentice right here. She's an ex-apprentice of Master Soul, and now they're fighting all these years later, after she's kind of gone dark. This is actually Vanestra Rowe. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, Vanestra Rowe. She is one of the only characters so far that we know is from the High Republic. So do you have to read the High Republic books to understand this show? Absolutely not. But it would help. You would know some more hidden details about these characters. Like Vanestra Rowe, she's an older character in this show, but when she was 15, she's in the High Republic books. And she's, she's learning to become a Jedi. Now she's obviously a lot older, and she's probably a pretty uh, cool Jedi Master, but we see her here. Got some more characters here. We got uh, the Wookiee Jedi. This looks like a flashback, as you can tell. Master Soul is wearing a different outfit, more gold than white, and his hair is a lot shorter. So this might be a flashback as well. About good. So these are the witches that we were talking about. This is Mother something, I forget what her name is. We'll, we'll go over all the names in a second. But these are a coven of witches right here. All these people. So they they clearly don't look like the same witches that we remember from the Night Sisters of Dothamir. But that doesn't mean that they're not witches. Witches don't just only originate from Dothamir. There are other witches in the galaxy and this is a coven of them. This isn't about good or bad. Got a ship crashing on some, uh, some wintry, snowy planet. Where we see these Jedi, so it's probably Master Soul who crashed there. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? So that, there we got our main character. She is the main character. So we got our main character here, looking off at somebody in the distance. Possibly the Sith Lord, but... And 
who is allowed to use it. So that could be our Sith Lord up there. Now, we know Darth Plagueis has a very tall and skinny head. He's a mun. Uh, so that does not really look like him. It could be Tenebris, or it could be completely somebody else. We don't really know. What is that? And the unanswered question of all unanswered questions. Who the hell is this Sith Lord? From the lightsaber from the hand, we don't really know. It does look like a human hand from what I see. And that's pretty much it. That's all we know. That's literally all we know. We don't get a better look at this character except for their hand. We have no clue. This is the only look we get. Most likely human. And could be our main character of May. But we'll talk about it in a second. So I count about eight here, eight Jedi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this Sith Lord is fighting them all off. All at the same time. That's pretty badass, but also very powerful. And we don't know who could have done this. You get just a look at their red lightsaber there, but not a look at their body or anything. So now I'm thinking like this, what does the title card mean? We know the Ahsoka show had the uh, World Between Worlds thing behind it. And obviously we saw the World Between Worlds in Ahsoka. So I'm thinking that this might, obviously the whole logo is red with a little bit of light behind it with the blue. So it's going to be a battle between light and dark, obviously. So that's kind of just what I think it is. But two episode premiere on June 4th. Now let's talk about what these... Uh, these characters' descriptions are. So this is coming from StarWars.com themselves. This is all we got on the characters here. So in this was the poster that released on Monday in the Age of Light, Darkness Rises with this cool lightsaber hilt with blood sort of smeared on the ground here. It looks badass, looks cool. But the description is, this is a new description because we had an older description, an investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a, a respected Jedi Master, probably Master Soul, against a dangerous warrior from his past, probably May. Uh, as more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal all is not what it seems. That's it. That's all we got. It's a mystery science fi fiction genre. So, Master is probably Master Soul that we saw in the trailer, and the Warrior is probably the girl, May. But let's read the descriptions of the characters here. Um, bu 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 oh, wait, that's not it. Go back. Okay, so here are, the, here are all the characters that we got descriptions for. Actually, a lot of them, so let's go through all of them. So, this is May, our main character. They're all pretty short descriptions, by the way. Yeah, like, look at this, very short. So, May is our main character. May gets swept up into a sinister mystery, one that puts her into the center of a conflict in, un in unexpected ways. So she's probably going to be the villain. She's the acolyte. She's probably going to be a Sith Lord at some point or go down the route of becoming a Sith Lord. And that's our main character of the entire show right here. That's May. Then you got Master Soul, who was her master. I think she's a youngling right sitting somewhere in here, and this is a flashback scene, but this is Master Soul. Master Soul is a wise, highly respected, powerful Jedi Master, strong in the ways of the Force, who is going through emotional conflict, and that emotional conflict is probably because he's fighting his ex-Padawan, or ex-apprentice, whatever you want to call it. That's Soul. Then we got this dude. You only see him briefly in the trailer for one frame. Uh... Quimir, Quimir, Quim, whatever, is a former smuggler who now makes a living as a trader, uh, procuring unusual things and enjoying a life of leisure. So he was once a smuggler and now he's not. Probably like a, the Jedi come to him for help with information type deal. Not really sure, but that's him. Then we got uh, Jackie who is the girl from uh, Logan, the girl who played Logan, what was her name? Daphne Keen, I think, something like that. So she is a Padawan apprentice of Master Soul. So now she is the Padawan apprentice of Master Soul. 
Although she is young, she projects calm and conducts herself with maturity. So she is now the apprentice of Master Soul, and we believe that May was the apprentice of Master Soul before. So they could be some conflict there, Padawan v. Padawan, apprentice v. apprentice maybe, get to see the two of them fight. That would be cool. Then we got Yord. So Yord was the guy we saw in the trailer. Yord is a Jedi Knight and guardian, oh, sorry, guardian of the Jedi Temple. He's an overachiever and a rule follower. He needs to, a, he needs to be a by-the-book Jedi. Oh, wait. oh, his need to be a by-the-book Jedi can cloud his mind. So I think Yord might be like the kind of he finds the Sith type dude. Like he's the one who finds the Sith and dies to them, honestly. But he does look like a pretty cool character. He honestly looks like Bell Zetafar a little bit from, from the higher public books, but obviously he's not. He's a different name. Vanestra Rowe is the only character, and as you can tell, she already has a very long description because she is the only character so far that is from the High Republic books. So she has a backstory. So Vanestra Rowe is an elder Jedi master by the time of the Acolyte who has ascended the ranks of the Jedi from a teen prodigy to a leader of the Order. She became one of the youngest Jedi Knights uh, in, the, in a generation at the age of 15 and solidified her status as a prodigy when she took uh, Amir Kentaros as a Padawan the next year. That's all sort of explained in the High Republic books, if you want to read those. With her purple blade lightsaber, she can change it into a whiplash. It's pretty cool. A light whip, sorry. Into a light whip. It's pretty much just a, a whip but it's a lightsaber. It's pretty cool. Young Ro led with unwavered faith in the Force and devotion to the Jedi Order, but in the, late, in the years after the fall of the Starlight Beacon, while mourning those lost in the destruction, including her own Padawan, Venestra pulled back from the Order and shifted her focus to heal herself. And now she's a lot older by the time of the Acolyte here. Then we got... So this character's pretty interesting. The witch we were talking about. Mother... Uh, Anisia, 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 sure. So she is a leader of a coven of witches who value their independence and their preservation of their belief and power. So we don't really know where the witches fall into any of this with the, with the Sith at the end of the trailer, the new Jedi that we're being introduced to. We really don't know where the witches are going to sort of fit in, into the puzzle. But they do seem pretty interesting, as we've seen witches from the Knights of Dothamir in Jedi Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order, in the Clone Wars, in Rebels, in Ahsoka, they're going to be a very important piece of the puzzle with Thrawn's heir to the Empire. But now we're seeing them years and hundreds of years before in a different coven of witches that aren't from Dothamir. So that'll be pretty interesting as well. So then we get a Wookiee Jedi named uh, Kelnaka. Kelnaka. So Kelnaka is a Wookiee Jedi aloner who survives, in, uh, who lives a solitary life. So he's kind of doing his own thing in solitary. What's up, Zap? How we doing? Um, so he's just kind of doing his own thing in solitary. He's obviously going to be brought into the mix, but we don't know how. But it's cool to see Wookiee Jedi all the time. Yeah, so here is Indira, uh, uh, Indara. Indara. Master Indara is a Jedi master of great physical and mental skill. We see her fighting in the trailer, but that's a very brief description where you don't really get to know much about her at all. But So those are the characters that they've highlighted, at least, from the trailer. All nine of them, with descriptions. Honestly, every last one of them is more intriguing than the last. I'm very excited to see all these brand new characters be introduced in Star Wars, and this brand new time period be introduced in Star Wars. So, with all of that being said, from the descriptions of characters to breaking down the trailer to who the hell is that Sith Lord to all this. What do you think of the Acolyte trailer? Did you like it? Let's rank it out of 10. Rank this Acolyte trailer out of 10 on a hype scale. 10 being, oh my God, I can't wait for this show. This is going to be the greatest show of all time to one being, I w will pay to not watch this show. That trailer was so horrible that I would never want to watch it again. On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you at with this Acolyte trailer? For me, honestly, it's a 9.5 out of 10. Like, this got me way more excited than I could have ever imagined for the Acolyte. 
I was really worried about how excited I would be for this show just purely based off of the division in the fandom before even seeing the trailer. A lot of fans were not excited for this show at all. A lot of people were concerned that it wouldn't be good. Concerned that it was Leslie Headland in charge. There was a lot of concerns around it. But this trailer sort of made me forget all those concerns. Because if the content's good, who cares? If the show's good, who cares? And that's the biggest thing. So I'm really, really excited for this show because of this trailer. And we have three more months. Three more months until this show releases. That means three more months of promotion. That means three more months of trailers. More uh, descriptions of characters. More cool things. Possibly seeing what Sith Lords will be involved. Possibly seeing what's going on. What's up, Mace? How we doing? I'm really excited for this show. Really excited for this show, and I can't wait. Can I please, while you're putting your poll in there, get some good cups follow orders in the chat, please? Dun dun, the return of the good cup. Very nice. It's so good to be back streaming, I must say. I must say. It's so good to be back. All right, let's see it. Maggie gives it an 100 out of 10. Wow. Zap says 9 out of 10. Nice. John says 7.5 out of 10. 500 out of 10. Nice. 10 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm pretty much right there. 9.5 out of 10. This trailer got me extremely excited. Extremely excited. And 86% of you agree with me. 86% of you are excited for this Acolyte show, which is cool. Good to see. Great to see. All right, should we take a second to talk about the Bad Batch? Should we switch our gears a little bit and talk about the Bad Batch? Uh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing before we switch over to the Bad Batch. The Acolyte is actually getting a exclusive look at the Acolyte if you go to see The Phantom Menace in theaters, which releases on May 3rd and will be out probably for a whole week or something. So The Phantom Menace is being re-released into theaters for the 25th anniversary of the movie because it came out in 1999. And I'm definitely going to see it. Tell me in the chat if you're going to see it in the in select theaters around the uh, around the globe, I believe. So it's but on May third, it's releasing with an exclusive look at the acolyte. So an exclusive look at the acolyte is going to be re released re, uh, re or released with the re release of the Phantom Menace. Zap's going nice. Yeah, I'm definitely going to see this in the exclusive actually really sounds awesome to me so i cannot wait to see that so that's a little bit of last bits i'm hearing yeah i hear it's at the end yeah it's probably gonna be at the end maybe it's like a trailer but it's probably more so at the end of the whole thing yeah 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 all right let me scroll up and read some chats before we get into the bad batch because i gotta read what's going on here um anthony says honestly mike after after all of the deconstruction slash uh, demystifying of the Jedi in the sequels with Luke's new Jedi Order, yet intend wait yet intend to prop up Ray's Order for contrast. Nope. What are you talking about? How does that have anything to do with the acolyte? Ian says, as Luke said in the f in my favorite film, the Jedi's hubris and overconfidence did them in. Ian, your favorite film is The Last Jedi? I feel like I knew that. But, uh, I mean, as bad as I think The Last Jedi is, Luke Skywalker has a point in that movie. I don't like Luke Skywalker at all in that movie. Where he's at is not what I wanted him to be. But what he says about the Jedi is true. They were so corrupt that they allowed a Sith Lord to rise to power and take the Chosen One from them. That's how stupid they were. That's how blinded they were. By their own power. And that has to be like a lead up. It can't just happen like that. And I think the Acolyte could show us that lead up. Yeah. Uh, haven't the Sith been gone for hundreds of years? A thousand, technically. But could be another secret that the Jedi are keeping from themselves. Uh, Kuji Man says maybe they had an apprentice, or maybe he had his apprentice. Yeah, so I'm, it's more likely that the Sith that's shown in this trailer is an apprentice of Tenebris or Plagueis. It's not 
them themselves. And it's probably the May character, the main character of the show. Yeah. I do hope that they make it uh, Darth Tenebris. I do too. Just because Plagueis would be cool. But Tenebris has never even been mentioned or seen in Star Wars. And seeing him be a, a, Beth, a Beth Sith. A Beth Sith. Beth Sith. Beth Sith. A Beth, which is his species, become a Sith Lord would be absolutely like awesome. So cool. Your pal Joe, what is up? Ian says, The Jedi thought that the Sith were destroyed for a thousand years before the Phantom Menace, but Darth Bane survived. Uh, put the Sith into hiding and introduced the rule of two. Yes. That's when they thought that the Sith were destroyed, when Darth Bane put the rule of two into uh, effect. But, obviously they weren't. We know for a fact that they weren't. The Jedi just didn't know about them. But maybe they did. Yeah. Ian says, Someone needs to show Ezra the fight footage and school him properly. What? What are you talking about? John Groom says, Have we got confirmation of how long the Phantom Menace... Wait. How long before the Phantom Menace this is set? Keep hearing different times. I'm hearing... 50 to 100 years before the prequel trilogy. Not the Phantom Menace, the prequel trilogy. And the prequel trilogy spans over about 20-ish years. So that makes sense that it would be 50 to 100 because it's 20-ish years. But yeah, it's in that time period. 50 to 100 years before the Phantom Menace. Yeah. Fearless says, oh, that's Arc 2 where the Dark Side Cave is. Is it? Wait, what? Where? Fearless, where? Fearless, where? In the trailer, you're saying? Is this Octu? Is the is this Octu? Ellie, what's up? Is this Octu? Somebody in the chat, please help me out. Is this Octu? Is this Octu? That would be wild. If we got to see the Jedi go to Ark 2, and then we got to see a Sith go to Ark 2. Is this Ark 2? Holy shit. That would be pretty cool. Honestly, even for people who aren't fans of the sequel trilogy, you can't deny that this would be pretty cool if this is Ark 2. What? And who is allowed to use it? This is crazy. This is wild. I'm going to have to make a whole on video about this. If this is Ark 2, I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. Ark 2 in Acolyte trailer. Holy shit. That's crazy. Okay, what a great catch by Felix. That is incredible. Wow. Arc 2 in the ba in the Acolyte trailer. About power. And who is allowed to use it? Now that I'm fully convinced that it is, I'm fully convinced that it is. Like, now that you said that it is, I am 1,000% confirmed that it is. Now, there's always the off chance that it's not, but... I mean, it looks so much like it that it could be it. That's crazy. Great catch. Holy shnikes. That's wild. That's wild. Great catch. More yellow lightsabers. Yeah, there's a bunch of different colored lightsabers in this, which is cool. I like to see it. Yeah. In the Plagueis novel, Plagueis was 100 years old during the time of the Plagueis novel. Yeah, so it's possible that we could see Darth Tenebris have an apprentice be this girl, May. And then she either dies or whatever happens. And then he gets Plagueis as his next apprentice. So this could just be the apprentice before Darth Plagueis. It's definitely possible. Yeah. John Groom says, Makes sense that the Sith wouldn't want some renegade dark side user running around killing Jedi, as it would bring too much attention. So Tenebris is probably after her as well. Interesting. Well, the Sith are, like, hiding. They're not, like, 
not all of them would probably be hiding. I'm sure certain Sith would want to make their presence known more than others. Like, Palpatine takes over the entire galaxy. Takes on tens of thousands of Jedi at the same time to take down the entire galaxy. Maybe Tenebris sent May out to go kill a bunch of Jedi. Or maybe you're right, maybe he's hunting down her as well. It's possible. It's Me says, I think Disney is trying to move away from the Skywalker saga and tell new stories, which is a good thing. Because the sequels kept nostalgia baiting and keeping cop and kept copying the original trilogy. Yes, this is going to a different time. This is telling a new story, which is very exciting, which is very cool. I, I'm excited for it. But what's most interesting about the Acolyte is that it goes away from the Skywalker saga. It's the first thing outside of it. And this could lead to James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi movie, an Old Republic show, an Old Republic trilogy. We're going to talk about Leslie Headland in a minute here as she did an interview for this show. And we're going to read the interview. And she talks about the extended universe and how she actually went in and used the EU or Legends, whatever you want to call it. She actually used Legends material to create this show. Meaning we could be seeing Tenebris. Meaning we could be seeing a lot of stuff, connections to the Old Republic, all that stuff. Which would be so damn cool. Absolutely. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Zap says, was just popping in, Mike. I have a very busy day upcoming. Keep up the great work. I appreciate that, Zap. I appreciate it. Fearless says, yes, in the trailer where May is standing, you see a dark figure. That's Ock 2. That's crazy. Leslie Headland said that she is going to take inspiration from the sequels and said that the sequels were great. Well, obviously, she's not going to say the sequels were bad. She works for Disney. <laughs> she can't go around saying that the sequels were not good. That's not what's going to happen. So she obviously has to say that the sequels were great. But she also said she was taking inspiration from Legends as well. Make sure you credit Fearless in the video. Oh, 100%. 100%. Oh. Ellie says, so the chosen is cast for background character is casting for background characters and I could be a part of the show. Wow, that's crazy. I hope you get it. Ellie, that'll be so cool. That will be pretty damn cool. All right, let's read Leslie Headland's interview and then we will dive into the bad batch. Okay? Sound good? Sound good to everybody? Is everybody okay with that? Are you okay with that? All right, let's read this. This is Leslie Headland right here. Whatever you think the Acolyte is, it's not. Star Wars series creator Leslie Headland revealed in the first teaser trailer. This is what she had to say. <laughs> like a red lightsaber zinging through a forest, the first teaser of the Acolyte has arrived. Venestra Rowe opens the door. Uh, uh, opening a door might be my favorite part of the trailer, Leslie Headland tells StarWars.com. It's like, what's up? Listen, I haven't opened a door in a hundred years, Headland says with a laugh. So obviously Vanestra Rowe being the only recognizable character in the entire trailer. The mystery, the mystery thriller, which debuts on June 4th on Disney+, Plus, upend, upends the typical Jedi hero tale for a story focused on the dark side, disrupt, disrupting the Jedi Order in its prime. And Leslie Headland can't wait to show us more. The creator of the newest Star Wars live-action series first discovered the galaxy far, far away as a teenager watching... Okay, blah, 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 blah. Um, and immersing herself into the expanded universe with the books of Timothy Zahn, heir to the Empire. This is what she had to say. I think it's just meant so much to me because it was a, the place to live, a place to escape to. Not just the media, but uh, George Lucas had given you enough signposts that almost like Narnia you could just go into the Star Wars galaxy and live there and then you could just come out of the wardrobe at some point and go to class so what she's saying is in the 90s when all this legends material is being released you could go and literally live in Star Wars like Narnia you could go into the wardrobe and be in Star Wars until you had to come back to the real world and that's what she grew up on she grew up on the air to the Empire, just like Dave Filoni grew up on the heir to the Empire. And what's funny, shout out to Star Wars Sith. Tony, if you're in the chat, um, shout out to Star Wars Sith. He, he went to Star Wars Celebration and he saw Leslie Headland live. And his description of Leslie was a female version of Dave Filoni, which is very, very interesting. 
Yes. Um, when she landed the job to tell her own Star Wars story with the Acolyte, Leslie got a tattoo of Ralph Macari's original concept art of Princess Leia Organa on her right hand. Uh, the ink is a constant reminder of where the galaxy began as she penned her own unique t- as she pens her own unique tale. Uh, bah, 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 bah. The underdog versus the institution. Here we go. The teaser trailer features stunning fight choreography as series star Amanda Steinberg, character May, faces off against Carrie Ann Moss, Master in- Indara, and then with Li Zhang Cha's Master Soul. On set, the trio's skill, coupled with the support of the stunt team, was captivating. I was really impressed Carrie Ann Moss, Amanda Steinberg, and Li Zhang Cha really blew me away with how much of their own action that they did. Interesting, they did a lot of their own stunts. Fascinating. The way that they changed, challenged themselves, they understood that this was important and emotionally for the audience to see their faces during these scenes. So it's not just stunt choreographers and, uh, and stunt doubles doing the action, it's actually them because it's important to see their faces. All right, let's get to the good stuff here where she talks about legends being involved here. Set in the High Republic era, the Acolyte will begin to unravel how to uh, uh, how an esteemed organization like the Jedi Order could go from its golden age and also on the cusp of chaos that unfolds in the Skywalker uh, saga. So it goes from the golden age, which is the High Republic, to the chaos in the prequel trilogy. If Star Wars is about the underdog versus the institution, in the Acolyte, the Jedi are the institution. I was so interested in the storyline where the Jedi were at their height of their power. And I don't mean the Phantom Menace, because at that point, there's a Sith Lord in the Senate, and they're not picking up on it. They literally don't even see it. So it's a point before that where they don't even, they're even more powerful than that, because they don't even realize Palpatine's in the Senate. Hedlund wanted to explore further back, uh, when seeing a Sith seemed likely to encounter a... uh, Likely to likely as encountering a velociraptor, like is a thing I've heard of, but it's not something that you would even consider you'd be interacting with the Sith. It was a, it was not even real in their own minds. It was something that could couldn't even fathom. They've just heard of the Sith before, with a darker tone focusing on the duality that exists beyond the simplistic black and white view of good versus evil. The acolyte asks the key question before the fall of the Jedi. What went wrong? And if the bad guys are actually the underdogs, it it just seems like a cool reversal. So she's putting the underdog as the bad guy. And we're focusing on the bad guy in this show. So the character of May is going to be a bad guy. But she's going to feel like the underdog in this series. She's going to feel like you're rooting for her even though she's the villain. Which is crazy. Absolutely wild. But the big question is, what went wrong? What went wrong with the Jedi? How did they not sense Palpatine's presence in the Senate? And how did they allow the Chosen One to become the most powerful Sith Lord and destroy them? Destroy their own kind? Yes. All right, so we won't read the whole entire article here. But I wanted to read where she talks about the legends. Oh, here we go. EU. Here we go. Perfect. Ba, 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 ba. There is some EU lore that I decided to put in because I thought it would be cool and nobody tell me, told me I couldn't, is what she says here. So there's some EU lore. This could be absolutely incredible. This could be talking about old Republic lore, possibly seeing a Darth Revan holocron like we heard about so many months ago. Or it could be something like Darth Tenebris, who's of course only from Star Wars Legends and never been brought into canon. Or even Plagueis, who was mentioned in canon but never really brought in. We could really, really, really be seeing some EU lore be brought into Star Wars canon that we never thought we would see and could lead into possibly going into the Old Republic or even further back, which would be awesome. Um, she talks about here, there are a couple of really big EU ideas that are both that are utilized both early on in the series and later in the series because there is already confirmed to be two seasons. So that's pretty interesting. Two, a couple of really big EU ideas that are utilized in the show. 
I don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty cool to me. What's the EU? It's, it stands for Extended Universe or Legends of Star Wars. So there's canon and there's legends. Canon is the story, one through nine, solo, all the content that's on Disney Plus is canon. Legends is like the Plagueis novel or the Old Republic right now. Like a lot of it is still legends, but they can be told as canon stories. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. I think that's probably the most interesting thing she said in this whole entire interview about using Legends material to tell the story in the Acolyte. That's pretty fascinating to me. I don't know what it means. Could be talking about Darth Tenebris. Could be talking about the Old Republic. Could be talking about anything. But it's pretty damn cool. Yeah. For sure. All right. Where was I? Your pal Joe says, I was hoping the trailer would show a purple and red lightsaber uh, with Keanu Reeves slash Revan at the end. Well, Revan won't be alive at this point. This is only a hundred years before the Phantom Menace. Revan's thousands of years before the Phantom Menace. He won't be alive, but maybe seeing a hologram or a holocron of him is possible from like hundreds of years old. Uh, Ellie says, bro, I thought the poster on the side was for Dune. What? What are you talking about? Oh, this poster on the side was for Dune. Great news, everybody. I, I rewatched Dune 1 yesterday, and I'm going to see Dune 2 tomorrow in the theaters. So finally, 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 I'm going to see Dune 2. I know you guys have been begging me to go see it. I'm going to see it tomorrow. So no more spoilers for just one more day, and we'll get there. But yeah, it did look like Dune. Ellie says, I really want to watch Dune 2, but my little brother hasn't seen the first one yet and he doesn't want me to watch it without him. Oh, that stinks. That stinks. Where's Chopper? Chopper's right here. We'll unbox him at the end of the stream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fearless says, yeah, that's right. The point of view, because evil doesn't believe that they are evil. They think that they are in the right. The Jedi think that they are in the right too. Yeah, so it's all about the point of view. And I think the Acolyte is going to be the, from the point of view of the bad guys. Which is interesting. It might all be from the point of view of May, which would be pretty cool as well. Yeah. Very similar to, like, Anakin. You feel for Anakin going through the fall to the dark side because he's lost his mom, he, loses his, he thinks he's going to lose his wife, all that stuff. And it's not really from the point of view of Anakin, but you feel for the character. Almost. You have more of a respect for what his decision was, almost. And I think we're going to dive even deeper into that with this May character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about the Bad Batch, okay? We talked about the Acolyte for an hour and 12 minutes, an hour and 13 minutes. So let's switch gears a little bit to the Bad Batch. So let me end this poll. Let me end this poll. Oh my goodness, the math is mathing. Come back from vacation and the math starts to math for some reason. 80% of you are excited for the Acolyte show as 20% aren't, which is interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Hopefully that number will get even greater as we get closer and closer to the show. But right now, 80% of you in the chat right now do are excited for this Acolyte show, which is good. All right, let's pull up some Bad Badge stuff. So... Do you think Asajj Ventress was the hologram at the end of episode 8? Yes or no? Cat's Paw, what's up? What do we think? Was it Asajj Ventress at the end of the Bad Batch episode 8? What do we think? I am 1,000% sure that it is. Now, this episode of The Bad Batch was pretty good. Rank it out. At, uh, let's start there. Rank this episode of The Bad Batch, episode 8, with Fennec Shand, with this whole mission and, and Crosshair and Omega meditating, all that. Rank that episode out of 10 in the chat. Rank it out of 10. I am 1 million percent sure that that was Asajj at the end. 
I rank this episode probably a 7.8 out of 10. I thought it was really good seeing Omega still doing what Gungi taught her in the second season of meditating, now trying to teach Crosshair this technique. But also what we got with Fennec Shand. We got Fennec Shand more, but we also got Hunter and Wrecker going on this mission with her to fight one of those praying mantis-looking creatures. I forget what the uh, I forget what the species is named. But it was a very cool mission to get information. It was sort of a side mission type thing. Filler, like people like to call it, but it wasn't really. It explored a lot of stuff. And it introduced Asajj Ventress. Because the Empire is hunting people with an M count. And Fennec Shand is not one of those people hunting people for an M count, but Asajj Ventress is somebody who has a high M count. So here we go. Maggie gives it a 99 out of 10. We got a 7 out of 10, an 8.5 out of 10, an 8 out of 10, an 8.5 out of 10. I liked episode 7 more. Episode 7, I probably liked a little bit more. To, uh, I probably liked episode 8 a little bit more, actually. Yeah. The best scene in that episode was, of course, Crosshair and Omega scenes. They were pretty good. They were pretty good for sure. It was either Asajj or Quinlan. I, I think it's a lot more likely that it is Asajj Ventress. But now this means that Asajj is going to find the Bad Batch. The Bad Batch aren't going to find Asajj. Because Hunter and Wrecker are looking for these people who are hunting down the, the M count. The bounty hunters that are hunting down people with M counts for the, for the Empire. And Asajj Ventress is probably going to be warned that they are doing this and go to meet them. Now, what's interesting about this episode that wasn't really talked about too much online, from what I saw at least, was the Empire is hiring bounty hunters to hunt down people with M counts. Meaning, the people in the vault on Tantus are probably ex-Jedi. Probably people who got captured by the Empire, have a high M count, and are put in those back to tanks in the vault. Project Necromancer. So some people have been saying maybe it's Barris Offy in one of those back to tanks. Could be some other Jedi that we don't even know about. This is very interesting. Obviously we know Cad Bane is going to be brought in at some level as he's in the trailer. But Asajj Ventress, how does she really fit into this puzzle? Is she going to help the Bad Batch go take Mount Tantus? save all those force users how are they going to convince her to do that john groom says could be could be cad bane she was talking to it could be cad bane that she was talking to but i really really doubt it they actually i believe played asajj ventress's theme when they at the end of that episode so i think it's kind of like confirmed that it was asajj ventress but yeah Although I thought that there was the Inquisitors hunting for sensitives. Yes, but maybe the Inquisitors haven't really been rolled out yet. It's around this time that they are being rolled out. But it could be the bounty hunters that they hire first to get them. Anthony says, I'd rate this episode a 9 out of 10. I loved it. More Fennec Shand is always good. The dynamic between Omega and Crosshair is perfectly endearing. The, episode, the Acolyte trailer gets an 8 out of 10. Interesting. Cool. That's a good week for Star Wars if you get an 8 out of 10 and a 9 out of 10, I must say. But, yeah. Episodes 6 and 7 are definitely better than 8. Episodes 6 and 7 are better than 8. Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I was forgetting what episode eight and seven, or 6 and 7 were for a second. Then I remembered it was... Uh, the extraction in uh, the double of episode, yeah. Yeah. Asajj is going to help. I think Asajj is definitely going to help. She's going to be there as a ally, not a enemy for sure. Ian says, poor Barris, if she is one of those in the vault in the tank. Yeah, Barris, but I mean, she is a villain at the end of the Clone Wars, so put her in the tank. Yeah. It would be sweet to see Barris become an Inquisitor. That would be pretty cool. It would. Yeah, because she is already evil in the Clone Wars, so that would be cool. Yeah. Mike, I'm wondering, could the those individuals in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show that Obi-Wan saw in the Amber on the Fortress uh, uh, of Inquisitorius be victims of Hemlock's experiments? Like, after they uh, extracted their DNA, 
could be exploited. That would be kind of cool, actually. So the people that Obi-Wan sees on the Inquisitor's base in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, that would be pretty cool. Maybe it's Terra Sunube in the vault. It could be. Like, there's a bunch of Jedi that it could be. Jedi who survived Order 66 or just Jedi that were captured during Order 66. It's definitely possible. Definitely possible. Let's actually look up what is the next episode of, of the Bad Batch uh, title. Let's see. Title of the next Bad Batch episode. Here we go. So last week's was Bad Territory. So this one is the Harbinger. Harbinger. Harbinger? The Harbinger. Episode 9. So this by definition, let me look it up again. Let's define this word. Define Harbinger. Yeah. Okay. So by definition, a Harbinger is a person or... Th oh. Wrong button. A person or a thing that announces or signals the approach of another. A forerunner of something. So, with that being said, somebody is warning somebody of something in this upcoming episode from what we see. Could that be somebody warning the Bad Batch about a possible bounty hunter coming after them or something along those lines? I don't know. I don't know. But... It could be the warning of Asajj Ventress, her warning the Bad Batch that the Empire is not only after them, but has these bounty hunters on them, whatever it could be. I really don't know. I, I, I don't. And it could be your guess is as good as mine type thing. I mean, who do you think the harbor? I don't know. Who do you think it's referring to in this scenario? And what do you think it means? What do you think episode nine is going to be about? Give, your, give me your predictions in the chat, obviously, right now. But with... We're, we're past the halfway mark of this season now. Episode 8 was the halfway mark. We're past it. And we're going into the back half where Tantus is still a mystery to the heroes. They still don't know where it is. Although um, Omega and Crosshair escaped it. They still don't know where it is. We got another double up episode coming next week. Not this week, but the week after. And we're really coming towards the end here. So I really don't know what to expect coming down the line here. But I know that Asajj Ventress is showing up, Cat Bane is showing up, and they're probably going to Tantus to save all these clones that are there. Hemlock's probably going to die. A lot of the heroes are probably going to die. But it's kind of like, what's coming next? How do we go from here to there? That's what I'm kind of missing. And I want to know what you guys predict is going on next for the Bad Batch. Yeah. Um, the Weird Word episode. Yes, that's the Weird Word episode for sure. Harbinger is usually seen just before the Doom uh, as the Harbinger of, of Doom. Harbinger of, of Doom. So, yeah, I think this is probably the warning that they're going to be in big trouble, for sure. I think it could be Ventress. She's coming in and will probably warn the others about something. Yeah, about something. That's the big thing, is what that what is that something really being warned about? What if it's a Saj Ventress warning them about the Inquisitors? What if the Inquisitors are the big danger that are being now thrown at the Bad Batch? Because they're trying to hunt down Omega. Because Omega is the most important thing to the Empire. And Palpatine just told Hemlock that all of the Empire's resources are at his disposable, disposable, disposal to finding this person, Omega. It could be a warning that... Vader or the Inquisitors or the entire might of the Empire is after them now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Maggie says, I've given up on predictions. We've gotten close, but uh, cl close to nothing right so far. That is true, but that's the fun of predicting things. I mean, it's just fun. Yeah. Uh, it would make a lot of sense for Barris to become an Inquisitor. Imagine if Ahsoka encounters her and offs her. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, you get to see Omega, I mean, Ahsoka versus Barris again in that sort of storyline wrap-up. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm, wa uh, I'm watching for the Flying Dorito and Batcher, LOL. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. 
Ventress probably knows more than the Bad Batch do. Yeah, I think Ventress is going to come in and explain a lot to us. Explain to the Bad Batch, at least, what the M count means. And probably explain what's going on with the Empire. And what's going on in Mount Tantus. Because I'm sure Ventress probably knows a lot more than we do. A lot more than the Bad Batch do. And she'll sort of be like a person who comes in and explains a lot of it to us. Which would be really, really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um... Cat's Paw says, Ahsoka, oh, sorry, Asajj brings the warning to Pabu and helps Omega escape from the island. That could be possible. I think Omega will probably be captured by the Empire again, though, but that's just me. Fearless says, so she could tell them something new and warn them or something. What? Oh, Ventress. I get you. Ventress is going to tell them something new or warn them. I think she's probably going to come in and be like, look, guys, you're in grave danger. That's pretty much where I think we're going to be at. Yeah. Bear is tracking down Ahsoka as an Inquisitor would have been dope for a little Rebels side arc. It would have fit perfectly into Rebels. That would have been cool. But I don't I don't know how they'll do that now. Maybe in a, Jedi, a Tales of the Jedi episode? Maybe something like that? I don't know. It's possible. Thought Barris was dead. We're led to believe that Barris is dead, but we never see her die. You know? Yeah. All right, let's... I'm still tired from all the flying yesterday. It was crazy. A lot of flying. Uh, Let's take a look at... You guys want to do the chopper unboxing first, or do you want to talk about the Empire State Building or the Skywalker Saga all coming out at the same time? What do we want? What do we want to do first? As we hit sort of the back half of the stream, chopper. Okay, I see chopper. Chopper. All right, chopper. 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 Okay. Oh. Uh, Melvin, what's up? <laughs> Knights of Melvin, what's up? Says, I've been talking very negatively about Disney Star Wars over the past few years, but I would like to say something positive about the Acolyte trailer. Oh my God, Melvin, tell us. Please tell us. I know this is going to be like a reverse thing, but what what is the positive thing you have to say about the trailer? Uh, your pal Joe says, yes, that would fit perfectly for a Tales of the Jedi episode. Yes, it would. Maggie says, Ventress helps strangers who were a part of an army that she tried to kill her. Doesn't make much sense. Well, it does make sense because it's not really her problem, you know? They're just clones. They're not, like, the bad guys to her, you know? Barris is just put in a cell and awaits further trial. Yeah, and she gets... She gets freed, or we don't really know what happens to her, you know? All right, I'm going to start opening this. Melvin, please put your positive thing that you have to say about the Acolyte trailer. So I got skizzards right here. Don't run with scissors at home. Whoa. So this came all the way across the country from California to Massachusetts. Literally all the way across the country. From Disneyland to my studio... Chopper. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. Come on, Chopper, get out of the box. Chopper! Chopper! <laughs> Hang on. Melvin says, it broke records for most disliked Star Wars trailer in history. <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. It did, Melvin. It did. That's your positive thing to say about it? You know, it also broke the most views in the first 24 hours of a Star Wars trailer. But you didn't mention that, did you? All right, Chopper. You got to come out of this box, buddy. <laughs> but yes, Melvin, it did do that. Whoa, we did it. Come on, Chop. Come on, Chop. Work with me here. Work with me here. Oh, oh it's working. It's working. Ah. Some directions on the bottom. Do we need directions? Do we need directions? That's the back of the box. Remote control. All this stuff. 
Ugh. Buckets. Okay. Chopper. Get him off this. Let's get him out this box. Let's get him freed. Let's get him freed. All right. Let's. Let's see this here. Let's see this here. Melvin says, "There's always room for positivity in the world." Yeah, Melvin, and I love how positive your channel has really become. I love it. I really appreciate it. There's always some room for positivity. Chopper does not want to get out of this box. Oh, it's because he's attached to the back. Hang on. Hang on. This is not the greatest unboxing video you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> 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 This plastic is stronger than my scissors. <laughs> Rick, God damn it. <laughs> ah, got it. One down, two to go. Chopper, I'm coming, buddy. I will save you from this box. I'm coming, Chopper. This is the process. We've cut one. <laughs> We're trying to cut a second one. Oh, we got two. Two down, one to go. This is not the greatest unboxing video you've ever seen. Get Chopper out of that box. I'm working on it! I'm working on it! Chopper, I'm saving! Come on. They really don't want Chopper to get out of this box. I think they lock him tight because they know he'll cause havoc at Galaxy's Edge. Free Chopper? Okay, let's free Chopper. Whoa. 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 It's working! It's working! Whoa. Box. Gone. He's still in plastic, but that's about to change. Come on, Chop, get out of the plastic. Oh. I don't want to break his hands up there. His hand oh, his hands are tied together. That was a good catch by me. Would have broke his hands. Are they tied or... Oh, I don't think they're tied, actually. Oh, wait, yeah, they are. How do I untie these? This is not the greatest unboxing video you've ever seen. <laughs> what the hell? How do I untie this? Should I just chop it? Should I chop Chopper? How do I break that? Oh, oh, I, I gotta cut it. I gotta cut it. I gotta cut it. Where did my scissors go? Oh, they're right there. I'm coming, Chopper. I'm coming, buddy. You're about to be freed. You're about to be freed. How the hell? Why do they, they don't make it easy. They don't make it easy, you know? It's free chopper. Oh. oh. Anything else, chopper? Anything else? Any other reason to not come out of this box? Uh, uh, the pause the pause the power of positivity to take him out. Okay. And there's the remote in the back. Hang on. Let me put him down for a second. Whoa, he almost fell over. Whoa, chopper. Chill out there. Okay. Anything else? Is a remote. I do have the batteries. So it goes up, down, left, right, or up, down, left, right. I don't know what these other two buttons do, but we're about to find out. We're about to find out. Oh, I need a screwdriver? Are you fucking kidding me? Damn it. <laughs> I brought scissors. I brought everything. Here's Chopper in the flesh. All right, we're going to get a screwdriver really quickly. Actually, there should be one right near me. This is Chopper from Galaxy's Edge. You can go buy him, probably online actually, but on Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Chopper, how do I fucking... Okay, let me go grab this, uh, he was vacuum packed. Here's, here, Chopper, take the stream over. How do I... Uh, I'm putting him down. All right, I gotta grab this screwdriver, I guess. It's right there. It's literally right across my room. I see it right now. Stay, don't move. Oh, man.
Thank you guys for th thirty thousand. Okay. <laughs> let's let's screwdriver chopper. Sorry, buddy. Had to happen. All right. Let's uh let's open them up. Let's open them up. Let's open them up. All right. While we're doing this, put your favorite droid in all of Star Wars in the chat, please. Favorite droid in all of Star Wars. We put this to a vote in the Discord, by the way. I wanted to buy the BD-1. Uh, he looks pretty cool, but I mean, Chopper, let's be honest. Doesn't get much better than this. R2. R2's a good one. How much looser do I have to make it, Chopper? Oh, is your head popping off? Oh, his head moves around. That's so cool. K2SO, that's a good one. Brian says IG88. That's pretty good. I'm glad IG88 came back in season three. How? What, chopper. Why are these screws so tightly on you? What the hell, buddy? BD1. BD1's good. The grit. He's, he's awesome. I wanted to get him, honestly, but people spoke. And they wanted Chopper. How do I... Ah! Chopper does not want to be opened and brought to life. Does not want to be opened at all. Oh, I almost just took his head off. I almost just took Chopper's head off. <clears throat> he has fucking batteries in him. Are you kidding me? Sorry for the swears, guys. <laughs> I did all that for nothing. How do you turn on, buddy? Where's your on switch? Maybe I should have read the directions. Should we read the directions? Might have been smart. Before we started opening up his spine. Alright, let's see. Would help if they weren't upside down. Let's see. Where's his power button? Switch on. Oh, the controller. Switch on. Okay. See pairing steps. Okay, we got a pair. Hold down the pairing button on the underside of droid body as shown in image. Where's the image? Oh, okay. Where's your buttons, buddy? How do I pair you? Chopper! All right, let's see. Where are your buttons, buddy? Let's see. Are they in here? Are they in here? Where are these buttons at? Oh. Maybe? No? Okay. That's nice. Chopper, where are your buttons? It says on the underside there's no buttons down here. They're lying to me. Oh, he just lost a hand. Hand down. <laughs> Fixed it. Fixed it. No worries. Whoa. All right, this has got to be pretty cool. I got to get him going here. We got to get him hooked up. How do I do this? I was not prepared for this. Ooh. Stop ready to go and roll into action. Oh, found the buttons. I just had to move his frickin' legs. Okay. Hold that button. Hold this button, I guess. That's how we gotta turn him on. Oh. It's working! I think. We got some red buttons going on here. Okay. Is this working? I don't think it paired to the remote. No, it did not. Hang on. Hang on. The suspense is killing me. Jay, what is up? Hey, it's this is all part of it, you know? Am I okay? Am I okay over here? Yes, I am. We got we got lights. We got some lights, okay? Here we go. Where was I? Make sure your remote control is off position while holding Forward accessory button. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Off. 
forward button. Maybe I should actually pay attention to the directions here. Oh, the blinking is getting faster. Come on, Chop, you can do it. Connect to your remote. Oh, did that work? Did it work? No, it did not work. Let's try again. Let's try again. What's the droid's name in Dr. Afra? They kill a lot of people in her comics. They do kill a lot of people in her com. Uh, they do kill a lot of people in, in Afra comics, honestly, but I forget what the name of the droid is. I forget what the name of the droid is. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Step one. Hold down the pairing button on the other side of the droid. Release button after LED starts blinking. Two. Uh, make sure remote control is off. Done. Uh, well, holding down forward and accessory button. What's accessory button? Oh, okay. That one too. Uh, and three, when pairing successful, the LED will will turn and... Wait, what? Okay, let's try that then. I hit no work. <clears throat> Why it no work? Huh? Why it no work? Oh, I get it. 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 I think we got it. Are we ready? I got it. Huh. <laughs> Hang on, how do we get him to talk? Okay, this is awesome. <laughs> we did it. Chopper has been opened and he is alive. He's got a, he's got a mind of his own. <laughs> this is awesome. This is well worth the millions of dollars I spent on him. So, we have a big decision to make, ladies and gentlemen. The Boba Fett helmet in the background of my videos is pretty iconic, if, if you don't know. Um, but I mean, Chopper, we got to put him in the background somewhere. He's getting angry. If, if he's getting angry. If he's not, if he's not in the background of the videos, he might kill me. <laughs> so I got to put him in the background. So where are we going to put Chopper? Oh my God, his arms move too. They're not that tightly secured. He actually tried. I wish I could show you guys him driving around. Actually, I can. <laughs> How about that? Whoa. What? <laughs> He's got a mind of his own, I'm telling you. Maggie says, if you're going to move the Boba Fett helmet, then you got to wear it. Okay, so is that the new deal? This is 
so good. This is so awesome. I think he's trying to tell me something. I, I just don't speak his language. Can you guys hear him back there? He's getting angry. This is amazing. This was the greatest purchase of my life. Move C-3PO? Oh, and put him on that side? Is what you're saying? I put the Boba Fett on that side. Should, who, wh wait, what are you talking about? Should 3PO's head be moved? And the lightsaber? Obi-Wan's saber? Alright guys, you gotta help me out with the setup. What should we do? Should the Boba Fett helmet stay there and then Chopper goes on this side? Or should the Boba Fett helmet go on that side? What do we think? Here, I'll, 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 I'll give you some options. Chopper must stay. He has to stay. He's staying and he's 100% staying. What if we move C-3PO? And put Boba there. Whoa. <laughs> he almost just jumped off the edge there. This is so good. What do we think? Is that better? What do we think? Put Boba Fett where C-3PO is. Like that? So like this? There's a reflection there. I don't like it. How about that? Is that good? Chopper's got to stay. I agree. I feel like he's going to murder me, though. He's sitting behind me. This isn't very safe. <laughs> oh my god, his hand comes out. Alright, we gotta examine him a little bit better here. He's got some cool characteristics. Like look at this. This comes out here. He can he can you he can wield this. Can he shock you? <laughs> his arms move around. Oh, his arm came off again. His arms move up and down. His head bobs around. This is amazing. Accessory button. Is a sleep mode. Droid will go to sleep and not activate for five minutes. This is amazing. This is so genius. Now I gotta screw his backpack on because I, I, I he's he's lightly wound. Top disarming chopper. I know he's too dangerous to be kept alive. Jay says the green door on the left opens. What? Oh, oh really? Actually, there's a piece of tape on him. Hang on, I gotta screw this in real quick. Don't worry, chopper. We're just screwing you back together. <laughs> So what do we think? Chopper? Goodbye? Good, good, good decision? What are we thinking? It's quite the unboxing, I must say. I don't do unboxing videos on the channel, but this was way more fun of an unboxing video, I must say. <laughs> this was way more fun to do it with you guys. All hail Chopper. Boba Fett helmet goes back, lightsaber in front of it, and Chopper goes next to C-3PO. I don't think Chopper would really fit well over there, no. You can't see him in totality, you know? Alright, let's see. You said this green door opens up? There's a piece of tape on it, so I'm guessing you're right. Let's get that piece of tape off of it. Yeah. Why'd they do this? Oh. Got the piece of tape off. Okay. This door opens. Ow. Oh. They do not want to break it here. Hmm. Oh, it opens. 
it opens and it closes. It's pretty cool. It clicks into place. This arm comes out. Oh, this arm moves all around actually. Wah, 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 wah. He did not like that. Right there. That's good. Chopper, good placement. I think this was quite a success. Un uh, this was a great un un unboxing video. It's a great unboxing, and uh, I appreciate you all for uh, bearing with me as I struggled to open a box for like 10 minutes. Uh, but he's free, and he's alive. He's alive. That's pretty awesome. Um, that is pretty damn cool. Yeah. We need a ch chant for Chopper, like good cuss follow orders. Chop, chop, Chopper. <laughs> Jay says, the set looks good where you, uh, where you put, where are you putting C-3PO? I don't know. Do we think we should just keep Boba down there and leave C-3PO out of it? I mean, where could 3PO go? Ah. Uh I don't think he fits very well up there. I like R5 being up there anyway. In the music box. That's such a creepy laugh. <clears throat> Chopper looks cool. Yeah, he does. Chopper shall now put his two cents in every stream from now on. He kind of, yeah, I guess he will. Jay says, you should wear Boba's and put C-3PO back. Do you think C-3PO should go back? Mm -mm. I don't know. What are you guys thinking? That good? We good? Is this peak setup? What do you think, Chop? I think that's a yes. Maybe it's a no. Not too sure. <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't think I can wear it. I don't think it works like that. I don't think it works like that. I don't know. We'll find a place for Boba maybe. If not, we'll just swap him and Chopper out every once in a while. Chopper has to be in the frame. That's for sure. We'll we'll figure it out. It's so good. So good. I'd rather see Boba Fett's helmet before C-3PO's head for now. So you'd rather Boba Fett's helmet than C-3PO's head over there? Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Maybe we'll have to pull it up. Maybe we'll have to pull it up. Let's, let's, actually, let's actually do that right now. By the way, 80% of you, the math is not mathing, but 80% of you do think that, that was the Saj Ventures at the end of the 8th episode. Alright, let's pull it up. Who should who should be to my left it's my left but it's like your guys is right i'll just go right and i'm gonna say my left because it's my left okay my left who should be to my left boba or c3po let's see it Instructions were actually very helpful this time. I could not figure out how to sync him to it. Yeah, exactly, Chop. Exactly. Boba or C-3PO? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? <clears throat> right off the bat, it's 80% of you saying Boba. I'll change it over the uh, next stream. 
I don't want to keep straight changing it in and out. All right. Well, I'll leave that poll up there for a little bit, but let's go over this. So if you guys didn't know, yesterday, the Star Wars took over the Empire State Building. Give me one into the chat if you saw this. Did you guys see this? The uh, Star Wars took over the Empire State Building? Did you guys see this? Yes or no? Actually, could I get it somehow? To look like Chopper is holding a lightsaber? I guess not. I guess not. Oh, so a bunch of you already saw this. Okay. So we're going to watch a little bit of it. It's pretty damn cool if I do say so myself. Uh, we got to see... Where is it? We got to see Anakin, or Hayden I should say, and how he reacted to it. Where was this? I thought it was on YouTube. I guess not. Let's see. Let us see. Maybe it was on Instagram, actually. Maybe, maybe. Um, oh, here it is. Perfect. Today, we're going to create... All right, so this is Hayden Christensen watching as Star Wars took over the Empire State Building. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it'll very quickly become noticeable. That's cool. Check that out. That's amazing. I know that guy. That is awesome. That's amazing. Well done. I know that guy. So pretty much what they did was they had the Empire State Building and they projected a bunch Today, of Star Wars. They're something truly special. And I think the biggest Star Wars event we've ever seen. We've got some great product reveals today, some great window displays. Now it is with great pleasure that I introduce our special guest who will flip the switch today, Darth Vader himself, Hayden Christensen. It's really yeah, nice to be switch. here and help kick off the Star Wars takeover of the Empire State Building. Star Wars has been a very important part of my life. It's a real pleasure to get to be here and see this amazing show that they're going to put on. So thank you. Minute video on YouTube. If you want to watch that full thing, we will obviously won't watch it now, but it's pretty damn cool. Uh, they, they did this whole Star Wars event on the Empire State Building. And we actually got to see Hayden Christensen press the button to turn it on and all that stuff. And it was... He's got another piece of tape on him. Are you spawning this tape? I swear this wasn't here a second ago. How, how are you doing this? How are you doing this? Ooh, got it off. Does that mean this piece got... Oh, another opening. Whoa. You have any more pieces of tape on you? <laughs> or what? I'm streaming. Shut up. Better? Where where do you be? You already belong. Right there? Right there. Perfect. Perfect. Right there. Shut up. Thanks, Tony. What's up, Tony? How we doing? We're gonna have to have a talk after this stream. Should we give him a microphone? Should we give him the microphone? Should we just give it to him? Oh, sorry, Chop. Doesn't read you. Sorry, Chop. Yeah, shut up. All right. Where was I? <laughs> Before I got so rudely interrupted. How, what? You gotta screw loose, buddy. All right, so there's also this. This was the po first poster sh uh, announced for 
Star Wars Celebration 2025. This is in Japan. Star Wars Celebration 2025. This is a pretty cool poster, if I do say so myself. Um, as of right now, I do not think I will be attending Star Wars Celebration 2025. It just seems like uh, it's it's too... No, I'm not going to Star Wars Celebration 2025. You can't come with me either. We're not going. That's insane. You're telling me that you're you have the funds to go there. We're not hijacking a plane. We're not going. So, we I'm not going to Star Wars Celebration 2025. Uh it seems unlikely. <laughs> As Tony says too expensive too far. Yeah, it's pretty far away. I'd love to go to Japan uh and I'd love to go to Star Wars Celebration and the two just happen to be in the same place. But it is a very expensive ticket, to say the least, and a very expensive trip. So as of right now, it does not seem like I'll be going. We're not going! As of right now, we're not going. Okay? We're not going. But I guess I'll be... Maybe... Convinced into it. As of right now, I'm not going. Does anybody in the chat have any plans on going to Star Wars Celebration 2025 in Japan? That would be so cool if you are, and, and I'd love to see pictures, but it seems unlikely for me right now. But tell me in the chat, obviously, if you think you are, or if you want to. Yeah. Uh, Coltix, uh, Colton, Colton, Colton Knox. What's up? Colton says, I just came in to say, uh, came in and say I'm actually into the Acolyte and doesn't and don't understand the, all the hate. I absolutely agree with you, Colton. I could not agree with you more, honestly. I am very, very excited for the Acolyte, and I absolutely can't wait. And I think Chopper is too, Chopper. Yeah, it makes sense. He's not in it, so he's not that he's not that hyped. He's not that excited. He's not in it, so you know, it, it, yeah. But I agree. I am very excited for the Acolyte, and I can't wait. I'm absolutely excited. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They like swords instead of lightsabers? <laughs> I guess. Fearless says, uh, if I could, I would, but like you, I cannot afford it. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like whatever. By the way, this poll is at 60% of you say Boba to 40 saying C-3PO. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. It's a very close one. Very close. All right. There's some other news, too. We had a ton of news this week. Actually, a lot of it was in the last couple of days. But the entire Skywalker saga is coming to the theaters on May the 4th. A whole marathon of Star Wars movies. You can go to the theaters and watch the entire saga. So, this will be a Star Wars day long to remember. Lucasfilm has announced that uh, in celebration of the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace, fans will have the chance to experience the entire Skywalker saga in theaters on May the 4th, also known as Star Wars Day. This includes all nine episodic films in chronological order, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. So no Solo and no Rogue One. In addition, the exclusive look at The Acolyte, the upcoming Disney Plus series set during the High Republic era, will take part in the Phantom Menace screening. Finally, those in attendance will receive a special limited edition poster. Tickets are on sale now. You can go uh, see for more information. So tickets are on sale now if you want to go get tickets. Right now they're on sale. Um, <coughs> so The Phantom Menace is coming out. For I'm guessing like a week in this, uh, this whole saga long marathon is only for the day, I believe. So, yes, that's a lot of hours to be sitting down. That's true, but I'm sure you can get up and take breaks and stuff, miss movies that you don't want to see, type thing. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this whole marathon, take all day to watch every single Star Wars movie in order. That sounds like a lot. And of course, that Saturday is the May the 4th, and it is a Saturday, so we'll be streaming that day, because of course it's Star Wars Day, and we're not missing out on a Star Wars Day stream, but I am definitely going to see The Phantom Menace as the re-release, because there'll be exclusive footage of uh, of The Acolyte, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Maggie says, I'm going to be a weirdo who dresses up for it. Hey, 
I went to Return of the Jedi last year and I dressed up for it as well. For sure. I had my lightsaber and a Boba Fett helmet. I wasn't really dressed up as anybody, but yeah. Colton says, The Phantom Menace premiere is going to be at the same theater as I saw Dune 2 at. So I'm going to, with a buddy uh, for the bonus acolyte thing. That's awesome. I also haven't seen The Phantom Menace in theaters yet because it was in 1999 and I was not alive in 1999. Um, I wasn't. You don't believe me that I wasn't alive in 1999? Jeez, okay, fine. Believe what you want. But I wasn't alive in 1999, as opposed to what Chopper is making you believe. Uh, so I didn't see The Phantom Menace on the big screen, and which is a bummer, because I wanted to, and now I get to. So it's just really, really, really cool. But yeah, I'm going to see Dune 2 tomorrow, Colton. I'm going to see Dune 2 tomorrow for the first time, which is nice. Uh, I was a Jedi for Halloween last year. That would be my costume. Last year, last year, last year. What was I last year? I was Anakin two years ago. But last year... I forget what I was. Honestly, don't remember. <laughs> but yeah. So that's pretty cool. A lot of big Star Wars news today. Star Wars Marathon on the 4th. Uh, the Acolytes releasing exclusive content with the re-release of The Phantom Menace. The Acolyte trailer. The Bad Batch episode. Who's the Sith? Is the Acolyte going to be good? Are we excited for the Acolyte? All this stuff. We got a lot to sort of go over today. We did it all in a quick, measly two hours, even though we're still probably going. Do you guys want to do call-ins today? Do you guys want to do call-ins before we end the stream? Maybe we should do some call-ins as well. And of course, we unboxed Chopper. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we did, Chopper. We did. It was fun. It was fun. Cat's Paw says, trying to boost their profits and trying to boost excitement for the Acolyte, but I don't think that's going to happen like they think that it will. Yes, um, I don't think like doing this exclusive thing with the Acolyte during the Phantom Menace is going to raise hype for the Acolyte, but I do think that it will help out, you know? Yeah. My nephew was Anakin. Oh, that's cool. You told us you were 21. I am 21. Uh, my excitement for the Acolyte? Is there, is there none? I'm confused. What does that mean? There's none. Should we do Collins? Do you guys want to do Collins? Tell me in the chat if you want to do Collins through the Discord. Uh, if not, we don't have to, but we can save them for Tuesday's stream for the predictions for the Bad Batch. But just if you guys wanted to, we got a bunch of people here. Just thinking. Colton says, I want to also bring up the fact that the Acolyte trailer is the same one that was at Star Wars Celebration eight months ago. So that trailer made out a very unfinished show. It is not the exact same one, actually. Um, the trailer is a little bit different in the... In the new one, but yes, it is very similar. So you, you're absolutely right. That trailer was done eight months ago. I think actually the Acolyte has been done for quite a long time. I think they maybe either had to do reshoots or they had some sort of like delay for some reason. Now, obviously we had the writer's strike last year, but I think it was done even before that. Why isn't there a celebration this year? That's a good question. Why isn't there a Star Wars celebration this year? Actually, Star Wars celebration wasn't a yearly thing before. Um, and then it recently became a yearly thing, but I like that they're taking one year off in between because you don't want to just have nothing to announce. And obviously next year they'll have the Mandalorian and Grogu movie to announce and they'll have some other projects to announce as well. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. Yeah. Jay says, it looks like the one that you had. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. The trailer is what you're saying. It did. Yeah. It's very similar. Very, very similar, for sure. Right now, 62% of you say Boba Fett, so I think Boba Fett's going to take over where C-3PO is during streams, if that's okay with everybody. I think Chopper has to stay there. Exactly. The Acolyte Season 1 is done for has been done for a year or so. The Acolyte has also been done for, I mean, Skeleton Crew has also been done for over a year. Yeah, they've both been done for quite a while. The only reason that we haven't gotten them is because the uh, the uh, writer strikes in post production is probably delayed a little bit. But also, they want to space out these projects. They don't really know how much the strikes were going to affect them, so they wanted to sort of space out their projects. You know, Matthew, what's up? Matthew says the problem I had with the trailer is how poorly lit it was. It seemed a little. Too, uh, it doesn't. It, 
could have been a darn thing. Maybe it was the brightness on your phone. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think it was too dark. Should we watch the trailer again? Should we watch the trailer again? They may do some special Acolyte preview at the Phantom Menace screening. Imagine if they did some kind of extended scene linked to the Acolyte. No, John, that's what we were just talking about. They are doing that. This was the poster that they announced with it. Uh, where, where was that? Right here. The Phantom Menace returns to the theaters May 3rd with an exclusive look at the upcoming Disney Plus Star Wars series, The Acolyte. That's actually happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's real. It's real. Colton says, Filming wrapped on the Acolyte in June of 2023. Googling that also led me to know that they are continuing to film in the UK, which is nice. Yeah, they're filming all over the place. Uh, even the Mandalorian movie is going to the UK as well. Uh, so it's cool. For sure. Fearless says, or they could just put uh, Cervea Crystal ads in it. Yeah, they could do that, for sure. Cervea Crystal. You know? Chopper loves those commercials, right, Chop? Exactly. All right, let's watch the trailer one more time before we get on out of here, because this trailer is so damn hype, and I don't know why nobody's excited for it. Just kidding. We're all excited for it. I appreciate it. Let's watch this trailer one last time. Chop, do you want to watch the trailer again? I think that's a yes. I'm taking it as a yes, Chop. Let's watch it. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sensed darkness. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? What is that? I mean, come on. How does that not get you excited? That 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 trailer is so hype. And now that we know so much more about these characters as we read their descriptions and stuff, you're starting to kind of piece it together what the story is, what's going on here, and it really gets me excited. I'm I'm really excited for this show. Like genuinely more excited for this show than honestly a lot of upcoming Star Wars projects. Skeleton Crew being one of them. I'm probably more excited than for this than even Tales of the Jedi Season 2. Like, I'm, I'm really, really excited for this. Three months away, June 4th, two-episode premiere. This is going to be a fun couple months in preparation, in, in promotions for this. All predictions we can come up with, all this stuff. It's going to be pretty damn cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited, and I think it's going to be pretty damn awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. Story about the Sith. Possible connections to Tenebris? Possible connections to the EU? Legends material? Old Republic? It could be pretty damn cool. But tell me, obviously, what you guys think, and we're probably going to get on out of here, so throw in any last comments that you have for the day. This was quite a very good comeback stream. I appreciate you guys coming back after I went on a week-long vacation, missing two streams, missing breakdown videos. It's like the worst week. I get there, I land in California, and it's Monday, and as soon as we land, within the hour, they post the poster for the Acolyte and say, trailer coming out tomorrow, and I'm like, are you serious? 
You couldn't have posted this last week. You couldn't have done it the week after. Had to be the one week that I'm not home to cover it. Are you serious? It was brutal. It was tough. It was tough. But we're back and better than ever. Watch out for a video tomorrow about who that Sith Lord is. I do have a very good theory on who it might be and who we might actually see in this trailer. Um, so, yeah. Did you, did you buy a new drinking cup? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I bought Chopper. Exactly. What he said. What he said. All right. I appreciate all of you. We have passed 30,000 subscribers. We are on our way to 40,000 or 35,000 or 34,000. Uh, we are on our way. I appreciate all of you. We are almost at 34,000. That's crazy. All right. We're almost at 34,000 subscribers. We are on the road to 50,000 at 100,000. Of course, I dumped this entire bucket of water on my head or cup of water on my head. And we are on our way there to get the silver play button. Wow. Uh, I appreciate all of you. We are one third of the way there. 33.3 is a third. So I appreciate all of you guys so much for hitting that subscribe, hitting that like button. And of course, hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a video and my pretty face will show up in the recommended feed of yours. I got some arguments to be made with Chopper after the stream, but I also got to finish up that video that I'm working on for tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Smash a freaking like on this stream and may the force be with you always. What a great stream. What a great show. I'm ending this poll right now because I forgot to last stream. Uh, but 66%, ooh, order 66. 66% of you say Boba Fett, so Boba Fett will be taking C-3PO's role in that left side of me in the streams. So that is pretty damn cool. I appreciate all of you for being here. I appreciate it, Cat's Paw. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening, a great rest of your lives, and good night, everybody.